Good morning, all friends and families of Concord United Methodist Church. If you're not a member of, your, of our church, we're glad you're joining us this morning. We welcome you in Christ's love. In this service, we're going to be talking about Jesus the Rock and God our Fortress. And from the book of First Peter, we read, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Thanks be to God. join in the responsive reading. Today we declare that God alone is our refuge and hope. He is our shelter and protection from our very first breath to our last. God's love and compassion never fails. He has promised us a kingdom that cannot be shaken. From our birth to our death, he has consecrated us and will not cast us away from him. So come, lift your voices in praise to God. We come to worship God together, bearing witness to his acts of mercy and love, proclaiming his glory to all who will listen. God, give us your grace and inspire us to serve you with courage through all our ages, through Jesus Christ who comes to say, Amen. Our first hymn this morning is A Mighty Fortress is Our God a fabulous old hymn written by Martin Luther almost 500 years ago.
aren't out and about yet, but our missions and ministries continue. We have our annual bikeathon coming up to raise funds for Heifer, and that will be a warm up on the 12th of September and then the actual ride on the 26th, both Saturdays. And you can ride 25 or 50 miles. We'd love to have as many riders as possible. Please contact me if that appeals to you. And if not, please sponsor the riders for Heifer. Marsh Boyer's memorial service will be on Friday, September 4th at 10 a.m. Folks can attend. It will be at Memory Garden Cemetery. Thank you for joining us today for our online worship. And the plan is to continue worship in this mode until the start of January. And we'll take it from there and see what happens. Followers of Christ small group meetings will be at on the last Saturday of each month. So the next one will be this coming Saturday, the 29th of August. They're from 5 to 7 p.m. via Zoom. And all small group leaders are welcome. Please reach out to Pastor Lee to join that meeting. If you would like to get a copy of Pastor Lee's wonderful sermons in a nutshell, you can get those via email or mailed to you by Pastor Lee or by Kathy. Our small group, Unshakable Hope, for those in their 30s and 40s, is next meeting on the 20th of September. And if you're a member of that group, Pastor Lee can extend the invite. They are reading the book Fearless, How to Trust God More and Fear Less. We've had a few movie reviews and book reviews. So if you've seen a good movie or read a good book recently that touches on our faith or connects to our faith, please give us a review, contact Pastor Lee and we'll, we'll get you in the service. We'd love to get more photos of whatever you're doing, arts, gardening, crafts, cooking, whatever you're up to, we'd love to see it. If you'd like to honor a current or former CUMC member, please send pictures of those individuals too, and then we can share them during the service. If you have prayer requests, we'd love to have those as well. If you could send them to Pastor Lee before 9 a.m. on Saturday morning each week. Uh, we're delighted this morning to have a book review by Michelle. The book is What Do You Do With An Idea? And then Michelle's gonna follow that with a children's moment as well. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Ed. Good morning, everybody. I love this book. This is a book that I bought uh, for one of my godchildren that lives in Belgium, Louis. His name is Louis. And I read it to him online. And it's the name of the book is What Do You Do With an Idea? The author is uh, Kobe Yamada. It, is all, it was a New York bestseller. Seller, and it's also illustrated by May B. Som. It won the gold seal for an independent published book. And it's not just a children's book. I love it because it talks about an idea. And what do you do with an idea? You know, especially when it's different, when it's something that comes out of the clear blue sky, out of the wild, and it just won't go away. It just won't disappear. And so what Kobe Yamada does it gives the, the idea, which we usually think of in context as something in our brain, he gives it a life and it becomes a living thing that follows this little boy around until he gets so frustrated with the idea, he turns around and confronts it and says, stop following me, stop bothering me. And then all of a sudden he realizes he must nurture this idea. And this idea becomes his best friend. And I'm not going to tell you the end of the book because the idea turns into something quite marvelous to change the whole world. So what do you do with an idea? Do you, do you put it aside? Sometimes God lives in those ideas. And I was thinking about Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 19. And it reads, the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. 
And as a CEO and leader of an organization, sometimes I'm asked to speak on behalf of my organization and I have no clue what I'm going to say. But when I pray and I ask God, he puts an idea in my heart and mind and I'm able to be what I think is a halfway decent leader. So I hope you pick up this book, What Do You Do With An Idea? He's also written What Do You Do With Change and What Do You Do With The Promise? They're great books. If you're a grandparent, grab that grandchild if you're too embarrassed to read a children's book. And if you're an adult like me, don't worry about it. Order it on Amazon in your house and nobody will know. God bless you. All right. Well, I haven't um, had the opportunity to do a children's moment or to teach Sunday school for a really long time. So I just want to say to all of you young people out there and all of you that are young at heart, we really miss seeing you um, at the church. And we know that this has been really difficult and scary sometimes for you. But we want you to know we're praying for you and that we love you and we're looking forward to you coming back to the church. But you just heard me talk about an idea. And sometimes people think things that come into our brain are not of God. But when you read the Bible, you realize that God sends us divine ideas. You know, I know when, when sometimes you take out your Legos, when my son, who will be 32 next week, uh, used to put Legos all over the floor and we would pull out the Legos and we would build it first the way that, you know, that little thing is on the leg in the box, we would build it the way that it said. But then the next time around, we would try to have different ideas of how we could reconfigure our Legos. And we reconfigured those Legos 101 times. And, and we would argue about where this went and where that went. And we were coming up with new ideas, ideas that weren't on the box, ideas that weren't on the pamphlet in the box, but divine ideas, ideas that were growing inside of us and bringing us closer together as, as a mother and a son. So I know you have to get ready for school now. And so I want you to do something for me. Some of you are going to have to do it virtually. I want you to find a space in your house where you're gonna be doing that work, where you're gonna be focused and you're going to be focused on your screen uh, I'm sorry, but you may have to focus on your screen and your teacher and whoever's teaching that class. And I want you to sit there and I want you to pray and ask God to give you some divine ideas how to set your space up. It has to be comfortable because you're going to be sitting for a long time. And you're going to have to move away, the, move those toys away that might get you defocused from your teacher, but create a space where you can focus and learn, but ask God for those divine ideas to help you do that. Bring your parents in and tell them to do the same for their workspace. We miss you and we love you, and we know this is hard for you, and we know that trying to learn and not be with your friends is really, really yucky, but you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it because you're unique and you are loved by God and you are loved by us. Take care, have a good start of the school season, and we're here for you, peace. Thank you so much, Michelle. Our anthem this morning is by
Hallelujah and amen. I can't think of anything else to say after every week. I wanted, to, I, I just can't, I don't feel I do justice, but all of you out there, this, that was a hallelujah moment. So say hallelujah, all right. <laughs> This is the time if we were in the sanctuary together, we would get up and walk around and give each other hugs. We probably wouldn't even let each other go right now. But we have an opportunity through this virtual worship to still pass the peace. And what that means is we send you a big warm hug and we say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. God bless you all so much. And Mm, take care of yourselves. Our scripture reading this, this morning is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 71, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 13. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. Our next hymn is Rock of Ages. somebody nearby when we feel helpless. It is good to have God nearby when you feel really helpless. This psalm 
talk about our situation, especially when we are getting older, we feel that we become helpless. And it is good to have God around us. These days we have online services, and when we start our online service worship and Zoom small groups, however, we had to overcome many hurdles. One of the hurdles was a technical challenge. Many of our church members did not know how to log into a Zoom meeting and how to navigate in Zoom setting. We did not know how to mute ourselves and how to uh, have some break. And we had to have one-to-one -one tutor sessions. So when we had a men's small group, it took a month for us to have a small group just because we have to learn how to use it. And sometimes we have to wait for our grandchildren to come to set things up for us. So somebody said, wait for Thanksgiving, my grandchildren will come and help me. Even though we are smart people, I know we are smart, but when we had such experience, we feel helpless. So when we feel helpless, we ask for help. Now, because we ask for help, we, we become experts in using computers and doing our Bible studies and small groups and meetings and worship services online. Now we can use computers and cell phones and iPads. When we feel helpless, we did not give up. We tried to learn new ways of performing ministries and we ask others for help. I spent many, many hours on Google and YouTube to watch and learn how to use these devices. And I know all of you are working hard to make this happen. Because we are humble, humble people are wise enough to acknowledge our limits and we come back to God and we are willing to learn. Arrogant people, they think they know everything, they know better and they do not ask help. They feel that they are always right and others are always wrong. So they become stubborn. But you and I, we are humble so we ask help and see how to do it. That's the uh, famous picture of Rembrandt, a prodigal son. He was saved because he humbled himself and came back home saying, Father, just treat me as one of your hired person. I'm not your son. I don't deserve to be a son. And then the father embraced him. That's how our relation with God works. Humble people think that they may be wrong and others may be right. So we have open mind. And some people are getting older and become more humble. Some people become more stubborn and rigid when they are getting older. So how are you going to getting older? You want to be more humble or you want to be more stubborn? This psalm is written by this psalmist, a humble old person. The psalmist had learned that he could not fix others. Even though he was a great king, he could not control others, even with his best effort. So he asked God to be with him. When he was surrounded by all the enemies, he just simply knelt down and asked God to help him. Wise people always seek God. And the Bible says the fear of God is the root of wisdom. When David was young, he was so energetic and ambitious, he got rid of Goliath the giant. He thought that he could save the country. He solved the national problems. However, because of that, he became a fugitive. He had no idea. But when David became the king of Israel, he thought that he could bring peace to the nation. But you know what? He became a rapist and a murderer. He had no clue. Now he humbly asked God's help for the world and for himself, saying, do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength is spent. 
Now he is wiser. Now is a time when we all have to repent our sins and examine our hearts and worship God. When we shelter in place, we have this time to examine our hearts and lifestyles. We have to see whether we were running after money or running after God's grace. When we have small groups, through our small group sharings, we need to discern what is essential and what is not essential in our lives. Do we really need gun to protect us? Even though we experience gun violence and the, the tragedy of gun violence every day, we need to examine our priorities in our lives and we have to figure out how to fight against the racism. And there is no one correct answer for all these issues. So we humbly pray to God, ask God to help. And God cares for those who humble themselves. So these are the questions we ask every day. Do we put God first in our lives? Do we worship God or money? Do I trust God completely? while still worry about many things, try to fix things myself. We ask those questions and answer honestly before God. Then we ask God's help for us and for our country. The good news is, brothers and sisters, is that God cares for those who humble themselves. So when we humble ourselves and ask God's help, God will help us. God will help all of us. We see in the Bible, God cares for those who humble themselves. Jesus even allowed the children to come close to him because they are humble ones. They just say, I do not know how to do this. Please help me. So Jesus said that kingdom of God will be like those. And Jesus praised the faith of a side of Phoenician woman when she sought God's grace with, with humility. When she asked help, Jesus said that, well, I was sent to help the Jews first. And you know, it's not good to throw away the food for children to dogs. So she was treated as one of dogs. And she said, of course, you're right, I'm just a dog. But even dogs, they can have some crumbs from the table. Please show your mercy. Give me just a crumb grace. And Jesus was so impressed by her humbleness and said, your wishes will be granted. Your daughter will be free from the sickness. So when we humble ourselves in front of God, God cares for us. And God will cure our nation, and God will cure our division, our racism, our economy, and this pandemic. God will protect and care for us in the time of old age. So brothers and sisters, after this scorching heat and storms of summer, we will see fruits on trees and harvest in the field. God will be with us when our strength is spent. And when we are getting older and weaker, God will not leave us alone to stay lonely. God will send us friends and colleagues and we will have a community around us, community of celebration and community of thanksgiving. So may God bless our brothers and sisters in their old age wisdom and humble spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray together for our brothers and sisters. Some of us are getting older and weaker, and we know that they have sacrificed all their resources and time and energy for your kingdom. Now when, they, when we are getting older, we are surrounded by this pandemic and wildfires and all these rumors of 
crisis. Do not cast away all of us when we are getting older. Protect us and help us to continue our worship in you and with you. And bless all our brothers and sisters. Amen. to become a part of our mission and ministry, you know that if you go to the website, you can see where we continue to be involved in the community around us, to fellowship with those in need when it comes to serving for, with food and prayer and just everything. So we need to continue and we learned today that our church is in the 100% tithing group. So congratulations Concord United Methodist Church for understanding that every blessing that you have, you pass through to serve God's people. I am so proud to be a member of this church. Mail a check to Concord United Methodist Church. Let's keep it up. 1645 West Street, Concord, California 94521. If you are not a member of the church, feel free to make a donation and write in the memo area where if you want to designate it to one of our mission and ministry. You can still use Venmo and you can enter Concord-UMC and make your, uh, make your donation there. You can also do it online. Uh, you go to ConcordUMC.org and click on the YouTube link and there's a wonderful video on how to give online. Pastor Lee is the host of that. And then you can also go to your bank and set it up for reoccurring um, payments to be sent to the church or um, and ask your bank on how to do that if you don't know how. God bless you as you continue to give. God bless you as you continue to discern. and our prayers go out today for the family of Janice Howe. Janice passed away last uh, Thursday after a stroke. We also want to raise up, and if you have, if you'd like to send cards and letters, the family's requested that they be sent to the Howe family. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Ken Karpoff on passing his real estate broker's exam and prayers for uh, my wife Kathleen recovering from a knee surgery and for a birthday on Friday. And prayers also continued for Gail Tyler, for Michelle's brother. And prayers as we fight the smoke and the firefighters throughout California try to help people avoid loss and prayers for those battling all the different ways that the pandemic is impacting our lives. Any other prayers? Can I just add that prayers that Milton is turning 32 on the 26th, uh, which is next week. Yeah, Let us pray together. Thank you, God, for the life that you have given to us. Our babies are growing and young ones are getting ready to be the leaders of our country. So bless Milton and all those young people who just started 
their life in the community. In the middle of this uh, progress, we heard the news of sad news of passing away. Comfort the Hall family, your daughter Janice Hall passed away. She was first yours and now she is still yours. Comfort and bless us so when we have a memorial service for her, help us to remember how great you are and you are the holder of our life. Lord, we pray for all those victims of wildfires and the families who had to be evacuated. We pray for the firefighters and first responders, those essential workers who are already tired and exhausted and they have to take care of another, victims of wildfires. So give them strength and courage and energy to sustain their lifestyle and help all of us to be volunteers and donors of resources so we can live together as one community. And thank you, God, for all those successful licensing and examination, especially Ken Karpov. And we pray for the surgeries and all the recoveries. Remember your daughter, Kathleen Gregory, and your son, Lord Michel, Michel Pope's brother. Lord, help all of us to stay physically and mentally and spiritually healthy and strong to be in relationship with you. And Lord, bless our country. Now we have big election coming up. So bless our country and help our country to find the right leader who can lead all of us, including all the other nations in the world, in the right direction, the direction that you want us to go and be with us. We pray this all in the name of Jesus, who taught us how to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespasses against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. closing hymn this morning is Go Forth for God. Oh, God.
Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our God and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all who depend on God and worship God until we die in the old age ever and forever. Amen.